Good afternoon. Welcome to another installment for How to Use Core University Edition. Today I'm going to talk to you how to generate your requirements analysis report using Core. Now the first thing you're going to have to do is go through the type field right here and make sure all of them are filled in with anything besides nil and besides functional. If it says functional or if it says nil, then it's not going to show up in your report. So you got to go through all of your requirements and make sure all of these are populated with the correct thing correct type. So when you get to a functional requirement that's actually been chosen as functional, all you have to do is switch it to something else for the time being, and then remember to switch it back. This way it'll show up in your requirements analysis report. Okay, so generating the requirements analysis report is pretty simple. You have to go up here to the upper left hand corner and run a script. Now what it's going to show by default here is the database statistics report version 1.1. What you want to do is go down here towards the bottom and choose system description document version 2.3 and hit OK. Now since we don't have any components in our database we're just going to choose no here. And we're only going to choose 2, 3, and 4 for these unless you have issues, risks, and all those other things uh, populated in your database. These things are the only ones I'm concerned about for showing you for this demonstration. So I'm going to go ahead and add those. Hit OK. Uh, as far as these diagrams right here, it's these diagrams is what it's going to show in the report. And that's not exactly what we want to see because the narrative piece of the report shows exactly what these requirement diagrams are showing. So it's pretty useless to show these diagrams in there. So we're just going to choose no for that option right there. Uh, actually there is no no. We're not going to add that. We're just going to hit OK and go through that. Then we're going to choose a location to save it to. And then it's going to open up Microsoft Word. And there it is. So what it'll show you is it'll organize it into originating requirements, design constraints, and now you remember that uh, we added these two to the design restraints, so these design constraints, so these actually don't belong here, so we'll go ahead and cut. So we'll go ahead and open up a new page and paste them into the new page, and then we'll just create a new heading right here called, and that'll turn into a heading for our table of contents. So we'll just break it out into its own little section. Here we've got performance requirements. And that's pretty much the end of it. Now I'm going to show you how to do the requirements verification traceability matrix. Let's go ahead and get rid of this heading up here. Call it something else. So we're going to do a landscape view for this one. And what you have to do for this is go back to core, choose the high level uh, requirement there. So to include the traceability matrix in your report, just click on the table up here at the top. Now what's going to pop up is, you've seen this before on some of the other videos, um, what this basically shows you is the number of the requirement, the name of the requirement, description of the requirement, the narrative, what that requirement is refined by, and what that requirement refines. So that's where your traceability is found. Now, if both of these boxes for a requirement are not filled out, then that's an orphan requirement. It's not attached to anything and it's just floating out there in space. So this table is actually really valuable for quickly locating any orphan requirements that aren't attached to anything. So there's a couple things missing from this table that we want to include in this report. So what we're going to do is right click up here, anywhere on the top here, and click edit columns. And this little dialog pops up. Sorry about the black in the background, that's okay there. We're going to include key performance parameters. We want to know what that is. We want to know what the rationale is for the requirements. And then we want to go down here to verified by, and then hit OK. What it's going to show you is here's your KPP column right here. Make it a little bit. I think I can make it bigger. KPP column right here. Your rationale is right here. 
and I just put this in here as kind of a cut and paste thing. And then over here, your verified by is going to show you know your different types of verification for each one of those requirements. So what you want to do to get this into your requirements analysis report in Microsoft Word, we're going to click on this box in the upper left hand corner. And then you're going to right click anywhere in any of the fields and click on copy. So now it's copied. And then we're going to run Microsoft Excel. Go down one cell and paste it in there. What we have to do here is select all these cells and we have to wrap the text within the cells so everything looks a little neater. Still kind of a little mess, which is okay. Spread these out a little bit. And select everything once we have it all prettied up the way we want it. Copy it, Control C, go to Microsoft Word, and hit Control V, or paste. Now it's going to look pretty ugly like this, so you want to go down here to this little clipboard where it says Control. Click on that once, and then do the second option right here, which is Use Destination Styles. Just click on that, and there is your Requirements Traceability and Verification Matrix. So it's pretty simple. There's other things to your requirements analysis report. You have to read through your Johns Hopkins Systems Engineering final project uh, guidance in order to find out uh, exactly all the requirements that should be that should be in your report that need to be met. Such as you need to have a mission aid statement in there. You need to have your KPPs, which I which I did include in this one. You need to have justification for each one of your requirements, which I have right here in the rationale. You need to have them numbered and labeled which I do have. You need to have the traceability matrix, which is what we just put in there. Uh, you need to have a column for uh, quantitative versus qualitative requirements. You need to compare those two. Uh, you need to have a verification method for each one of your requirements, which is this final cell over on the right. And you need to have a con ops, as well as the scope and the background statements for your requirements analysis report. So that concludes this video. It's short and sweet. Uh, so this is basically just showing you how to generate your requirements analysis report out of core using the run script tool. So tune in next time where we're going to finally break into doing the functional analysis piece for your final project. We'll talk to you then. Thanks.